go back to the beginning of modern time, you go back to when fathers would tell their son stories, and that was replaced by handwritten books, more content, right? Uh, when, when books were, went from handwriting to type books, more content, movable type, more content, vinyl records to tapes, more content, tapes to CDs, more content. Every time th that became easier, more efficient, and cheaper, and better to distribute the content, there was more content. But everybody, the provider of the content and the consumer benefited. So, because prices, like I said, prices went down, but the amount of content went up by more than the prices went down. Now let's fast forward to today. Where are we today? Right now, we've gone from shrink-wrapped CDs to digital downloads, and they're still easier, more efficient, cheaper, and better, just like since the beginning of time, with one exception. With one exception, which is revenues are down. For the first time, digital, digital revenue is actually down. And I'll give you an example to show you how much I don't believe that the media companies yet know how much has changed. We all know Jane Leno and we know, we know Conan. If you want to watch Jay Leno in LA, you go to Channel 4. In, in, in almost every major city in, in the world, you go to 4, 5, 6, 7, some low channel, you find it like that. Conan is on Channel 398 or 243B or something. It's, it's, it's in the bowels of the guide somewhere. Consequently, Jay Leno has twice as many viewers as uh, Conan. Consequently, Jay Leno gets paid twice as much as Conan. However, if you take all the content that's on Jay Leno's show over a 30-day period of time and the content that's on Conan's show over a 30-day period of time, Conan has twice as many people looking at that content over a 30-day period of time. So to me, it's more valuable. Now, Hollywood would argue, no, the advertisers are on network. Well, that's where they are today, but as I say a thousand times a year at my office, I say, if you want to know where the world is going, don't try to look to the future. Put yourself in the future and turn around and look backwards and try to build a plan of how present is going to get to where you are. As you all know what Moore's Law is, Gordon Moore was a fellow California guy that, that uh, went to school a couple hours north of here which was his, one of his first mistakes. But then uh, one of the more, more uh, brilliant things he did was he came up with something called Moore's Law, which, is that, which basically says the number of transistors that can be placed on an integrated circuit double every two years. Now, because we don't really look inside a computer, we don't really realize how dramatic that is. But if you applied uh, uh, Moore's Law to the automobile industry, we could buy a BMW for a little less than a dollar and a half. So that gives you an idea of how powerful Moore's Law has been. And it's something that we don't think about because we buy a computer, you know, it, it gets old, we buy a new one, and we don't really think about how that has changed the fabric of society. So let, let's look at um, Annenberg Law, which, yes, I just, I just named that this morning, but <laughs> I think it has a nice ring to it, which says that the amount of video in this world will double every 18 months. So the amount of video that circulates throughout the world, uh, the Annenberg Law says, will double every 18 months. And, I th and that's not just um, pulled out of, uh, out of my ear. That's actually <laughs> with a, a, around academics, uh, I wouldn't say it's a, 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 uh, a, a robust amount of study, but it's not without some amount of study that, that I came up with, with that number. And it's, and it's gonna continue for, for uh, quite a few years. To me, the digital divide that you, that you often hear about is not really about rich or, or about poor. It's not really about uh, high speed or dial up. To me, it's about young versus old. Beca because where my generation sees a lot of meaningless disorder, you guys see excitement and engagement. The only country in the world that rewards failure is America. If you fail and you pick yourself up, um, Everybody will think more of you than they will someone who succeeded time and time again. So it's the only country, so the fact that you are living at least presently in America and being educated in America, just go for it. And if you fail, what's the worst that can happen, right? You have to, you have to sleep on a friend's couch, which every one of you have done in the last week anyway, so it's not really <laughs> that big of a deal. So what opportunities are, are, are there out there specifically, right? Well, organizing and distributing and storage and, and being a curator, 
right? Being a curator of all this, of all this information. Google's in the business of gathering up this information, but someone has to be in the uh, business of making sense of it. Because gathering it up is one business model, making sense of it, you know, doing what our, our friend Shannon uh, uh, taught us in 1948, which is separating the noise from the signal, that's a business op opportunity. Moving, manipulating, storing video, we know how much there is. Those are business oppor opportunities. But, but the one that stands out the most to me is the business of deciphering the, and separating the noise from the signal. That's the business model that I think for you guys as um, uh, Annenberg, as future journalists, Annenberg students, as future journalists, as, as future media types, that's the business I think that you should focus on, the business of separating the noise from the signal. But you do hear constantly that, that your generation as students with texting and video games and Facebook is going to create anti-social uh, uh, attention deficit disorder generation of, of, of kids. And I have two college age kids, but I actually think the opposite <coughs> is true. I actually think the opposite is true. I actually think you do more in less time than my generation by a long, long shot. And, and, and just to give you, you know, a point on the curve, it took Gandhi 30 years to overthrow the regime. It took my generation 10 years to overthrow Milosevic. It took the Tunisians six weeks and the Egyptians 19 days. And we can't draw a straight line from Tunisia to Annenberg School, but it's indicative, it's indicative of how fast stuff, stuff works.